Hey everybody, the following is an excerpt from the monthly Rotto Roundup, and if you'd like to see the rest of the Roundup, you can hit that I up in the top right corner of the screen, or if you'd like to know more about the game, you can follow the link down in the show notes. And with that out of the way, let's talk about Arcana Rising. This is another game from designer Tim Armstrong. Again, I'm a huge fan of this designer. And it's weird. I had kind of passed over this one because when it originally came out from Gray Fox Games, I'd heard it had some take that in there. But I've actually played this game a few times now, and I can say it does not seem to. I haven't seen any of it. Uh, this is a, what do you call it, a closed hand drafting card game along the lines of, you know, Sushi Go or Seven Wonders. And where you have a hand of cards, you're going to pick one for yourself, hand the rest over. Once everybody reveals what they do, you're either going to tuck it into your board to uh, power up spells that you can cast later on. Or you're going to sacrifice it to cast spells that you want to cast. And the spells you can cast on any given turn are based on a variable setup phases of the moon that says, hey, in the first round, you can do the charms and the gold. In the second round, you can do the herbs and the potions. And so, okay, I know I just want to level this potion up a little bit more before we get to the fourth round when I can actually cast the potions. But am I going to sacrifice this card? This would be a really good card for me to have. But I'm not even in herbs. Am I going to try and focus on it anyway? It was sharp, it's fast, it's a lot of fun, and I gotta say, folks, considering the fact um, that it plays up to six, and it's got this really excellent um, engine building element to it, because you're playing all these, you've got five different engines you're trying to develop, and at any given time, on a turn, you could act, you could choose to sacrifice a card to activate two of your five engines. Although the cool thing is, at the end of a round, after everybody's gone through all their cards, you have the option to activate every one of your engines, but only the most recently played card. So that's a really fun combo -y element, too. This game is very, very sharp, and um, honestly, I've only gotten to play it at high player counts. I'm looking forward to play it at a lower player count game so that I have a little bit more control over the cards because, hey, if it's just me and you, I've got six cards, I keep one, I hand you five, I know you're going to hand four of those back. Oh, I, I could do a lot more long-term planning. That's kind of what Jen and I are used to playing games like Seven Wonders. Here, I've only played higher player count games where, you know, you never know what you're going to get. And um, so it feels like it might be a little bit more luck of the draw. Um, but even still, it plays incredibly fast. So this is a phenomenal, you know, not quite midweight, but not lightweight either. Kind of, I would actually say, I would say it's a little bit heavier, a little bit crunchier than um, Seven Wonders. But it fills that same niche, and I think it's really, really sharp. Well worth checking out. That is number 10 of the month. Arcana Rising. All right. And thanks for watching, folks. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference, believe me. But with that out of the way, if you'd like to see some more, over on the left, you can find a playlist of a whole bunch more Rotto Rapid Reviews. Up in the top right, there's the latest thing that's been added to the channel. And in the bottom right, you've got something YouTube recommends. Okay, folks. Thanks for watching.